Hi everyone, it's Trina from John's Furniture Repair and I'm just gonna do a little quick video on something that we are uh, adjusting. So we've refinished this table a little while ago. It's actually back in our, our videos, the whole dining room set that we refinished. And uh, we've come to the point where they need a little bit more space and they wanna put another leaf in. So we're gonna be putting in larger table extenders in here and making another walnut leaf. So we're just removing these there, the table's upside down on a cloth right here. And then we've picked up a, another uh, leaf here that we need to put a profile in and, and peg and put all in and line up with the table. So we've got the other leaves to match to as well. We've got to fit everything together. And we've ordered um, some new slides, some larger slides from Lee Valley. So first things first, get off the old slides and uh, position the new ones. So let's get to it. So I've got a clamp with very light pressure, just squeezing the table together all the way. So I know exactly how far I can go with these. So they're set there. And then I've got a um, square that is lined up with the seam of the two sides of the table and the runner so that I know it's square to the table. So at this point, I can install this piece. So I just need to um, put a couple clamps on it to hold it in place and then pre-drill and screw it in. All right, so I've got all the legs on and I've got the center legs measured and squared to the uh, glides. So they'll be supporting the table as it's opening a little wider than it was before. So time to flip this guy back on the floor and see how it's working and start lining up the new leaf. So we're gonna open it up and see how it's working. And close it up again. Perfect. All right, so now we can start with the new leaf. Thanks, Laura. That's my <laughs> shop hand here. All right, so I've got the blank here in the vise, and I've just been working on positioning for the pegs first before I do the profiles, which is really important because this could shift the leaf back and forth for the length. And so once you have the pegs in, then you know exactly where this leaf is going to be in conjunction with all the other parts of the table. So this part first and profile second, if you do this. Anyways, other thing that I've been um, doing is making just a really simple jig. Okay, so I'm all set up here to go and I've just rechecked my uh, centering a bunch of times. And so um, I'm just going to clamp the jig onto the piece right where it needs to be. And I'm using this hole, not this one. Right about there. So I've got a brand new um, 23rd 64th drill bit in here, and that is exactly the same size as the other ones. And I've got my depth measured with my sophisticated piece of tape. And I'm just going to get, make sure my drill is standing up properly when I put it in. And just to help it along, I am gonna use um, a good all point right in the center where I see it. And this is a pretty sharp all, so I just need to press it. Put the cap back on that guy, because he's really dangerous. And then I can put that brad point right into that center, right there. And then I'm just gonna check my angle visually. And there's the hole, and then we're just gonna double check everything, even though I've checked it 5,000 times. 
So this is coming from the bottom. There's more meat on the top here. And we've got 316s going here. Perfect. Yeah, looks good. So I'll just do that for the other four holes. And then we've got to uh, flip this over and do them as well on that side. Okay, so now I'm just going to try it with the pegs on the leaf here. So I'm just going to bring it all in. See how it's fitting. Looks good. This one looks like it's a little bit snug, but everything else is coming in nicely. So what I do usually if it's something that needs a tiny bit of an adjustment, I can see here which side of the hole my peg is going to. Oh, it's getting pulled out of this side, that's why I can't see. Yeah, so it's snug and it's actually pulling out the, the peg here. So I'll just pop that back in, put all the other ones in where they go. And then I can see that it's hitting a little bit on this side when it comes in. Just ever so slightly, not a lot. But what I'm going to do is just kind of put my drill bit back in there and just give it a little bit of pressure on the side there just to relieve it a little bit and then it'll probably go in just fine. Okay, I did that, so we'll just recheck it again. It should slip together nicely. Good. Not bad. It is pretty much perfect, I think. Yeah, so that side's good. Now we just have to transfer that over to the other side. And uh, then we'll need to make some little pegs to go in. All right, so I've got the leaf fitting in here. I had to do some adjustments. Um, I didn't remember that these leaves don't fit perfectly in both spots. Often old tables are like that. So I'm just making sure it fits the table uh, primarily. So uh, I've got it fit on this side with the pegs in on the holes that we made. And now I need to mark the other side and I could use a leaf, but this is more of a, uh, taking the extra step out that could screw up the measurement just because the leaves are so different. So I just want to fit it right to the table and use the table only uh, and try to make it good that way. So I need to mark where these pins are going exactly. So I'm just going to eyeball it and make a mark on the center of that. And then when I take this out, I can measure how far down these pins start and mark that out here. So there's one, two, three, four down there, and uh, then we'll do some measuring. All right, so now that it is fitting in the table, we can get our perfect length. So I'm just going to put a straight edge cross and get this cut to length, and then we can deal with the profile. So just a little bit off of this end, and I left a bit more to go off of this end. But everything is fitting nice. Okay, so I've been searching and searching for a router bit that uh, fits the profile, and none of them do, of course. They never get lucky. Anyways, I would have to do it with two router bits, but even in that, I would still have to do adjustments, and the router bits are about $100 a piece. And uh, I just decided it's one leaf. Um, I'm just gonna hand carve it. So unfortunately, you know, I get really close, but then it's spending $100 on a bit, waiting for it to come in the mail, and then still having to do handwork on top of it. Usually I decide just to do it myself. So it's a couple of different processes that I put together to get it to work perfectly. 
The first one is putting it through the table saw to get where that profile starts on the piece. And I do a practice piece because it's scary to put your walnut leaf through the table saw without doing that, and you always should. So this is my practice piece here. And I've gotten the edge, this is where the cut's gonna be on the top, where that profile starts. And I'll show you how I measure that up against the table. So I just kind of flush it up. This line needs to be this point. So I need to have enough width from here to here to start that line. It's a very faint and not very deep line on the table saw. I just, because this is a curve right here, it barely even dips in. So I just want that line to be nice and straight from the table saw so I know where to start doing my, my curve. So, um, That'll be the first thing I do. Second thing I do is grab this guy. And this is the profile of the table actually here. So you can see how nicely it fits the cove there. So that's gonna take out that material there. And then the rest of it, I might be able to use a router bit on the round over, or I'll just use a plane and bring it around that way. So it's complicated and takes some work, but there's only one leaf and I just didn't um, want to spend the money on the router bits and the extra time waiting for them. I'll have it done before they even put them in the box to ship them. So first up on the table saw and I've got it all set up and we'll cut that first line on both sides. Okay, so there's that first line right here. You can see it lines up pretty darn close to where the profile starts. I'm gonna have to take it back a little bit, but this edge is actually rounded a little bit, so that's where that's gonna, the rest of it's gonna come from. And it goes straight across and lines up with this one a little more shy. This table is a little bit off, but that's okay. Um, all of the leaves are like that, and old tables are often not perfect. Neither are new ones, to be honest. I did it on the other side, but I need to take a little bit more off. I was really careful. I'm just moving very incrementally here. And it looks like I could probably remove just a smidgen more material or maybe leave it just to get that round over. So I've got this leaf pretty much final fitted. Oh, the joys of old tables. Every single pin is in a different spot and up, down, to the right, to the left. It was really just a game of uh, putting it in, taking it out, adjusting over and over and over again, 15 million times, and then finally getting it to an acceptable level. So um, the other part of it is is, uh, you know, the table's a little bit warped on one side and I'm trying to have to like kind of friction fit it to get it to fit as flush as I can. And after I've done that as much as I can, I do have to take off a little bit of material here, a little bit here, just cause this table isn't totally flat and uh, it's probably a hand scraped table, so. We'll get the leaf to be as good as possible. And the old leaves are the same story. They don't fit as perfectly as you would think they would. Um, and it's just part of the old table and it's charming wonkiness. Anyways, so I've got everything looking pretty good. My table saw did go just a hair past where I wanted it to when I cut that first um, line so there's a little tiny bead of putty right in here but you won't see that once we get the finish on uh, I should have had the blade down just another hair 
but I think we've got it pretty much good here. Now we just need to do some good heavy sanding on the top and uh, get it to, to lay flush. And I've made these pencil marks, if you can kind of see here, um, some right here, just kind of telling me where I need to go a little bit heavier on the sanding and try to get that edge to meet up a little bit. And we will kind of very, very slightly ease the edge um, just as these guys are eased. They're not sharp corners like new pieces are. So that'll help to transition as well. Anyways, looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna put the color on, which is Gaudi's brown mahogany uh, that we did the rest of the set in. So we'll do that again and, and get the finish on. And this is a hand buffed finish. If you uh, watch the video that we did on refinishing this set, um, we did that and I'll show you how we buffed it out on this one leaf and to get it to that nice soft sheen. And I'm gonna rebuff the whole tabletop just because um, after some use to get a few scuffs and things. So it'd be nice to give it back to them with a nice buffed finish. So we've got the table together here with all the leaves and just looking at the color. I've got one coat of lacquer on uh, just the brown mahogany stain, no toner yet. And looking at the original color, it's definitely just a lot deeper of a tone. So we'll be doing that over top. I'm not quite sure. I think I did mix brown mahogany toner. So we're gonna hit that and see if it's getting us a little closer to the range here but the fit is good and it's looking like it's supposed to be here so we're gonna figure out that toner and we're almost off to the races all right so we've got the final finish on this leaf it's looking really beautiful it's perfectly smooth and you could be done at this stage um, but what we did on the table we're going to repeat on the leaf to, so it matches and this is more of a preference for the look of a finish than it is uh, for much. The look and the feel is a lot different than just a sprayed finish. So I'm gonna be using uh, four aught steel wool and wool lube, which is like snot in a bottle. <laughs> it is uh, a lubricant for your steel wool to kind of glide and, and uh, polish the surface. So I usually use it with a little bit of water and what I'll do is just put some water on my steel wool. And then I'll usually dip my steel wool in here and just kind of get a little bit of the uh, wool lube on where I'm going to start. Rub it in a little bit. And you want to be really straight with your passes because you're looking to kind of do a straight, straight grain kind of a scratch pattern. Um, with your polish. So that's the trick is keeping your arm completely parallel to the grain surface. I mean, this grain kind of runs everywhere, but just in line with the leaf. So you can see it's kind of sudsing. It's lubricating that surface. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of distributing. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water, but after that, no more just to distribute that uh, wool lube across that whole surface there. Once it's on there, then you're just gonna buff till it's dry. And there's, I think it was the first time I used this, or, or saw this, um, definitely the first time when I, ah, the first time I saw this was when my dad polished a little side table um, and he used this method 
and it was so smooth and it, it just has a total butter feel it's so beautiful and this was a perfectly smooth lacquer finish which you know that doesn't happen every time sometimes something falls in your finish but got lucky this time so it's a little bit um flatter of a sheen as well because it kind of skews the light reflection with those little scratches that you're putting in and they're very minute scratches too. The, the uh, wool lube really helps to kind of glide the steel wool over the surface. And it doesn't take too long. We're not looking for like a perfect polish. We're just giving it a little bit of a different look, a little bit more of a traditional finish to match the rest of the table that we did. And I'm actually gonna polish the rest of the table as well, because you can do this every couple of years just to renew Straighten out any other little scratches that happened from life. Just get a little bit of the wool lube and you give your table a nice buff down. And as long as there's still finish everywhere, you're good. Good stuff. And then on the sides, I'm just gonna get off the table here. I'm just gonna very lightly give it a little buff, just so that nice smooth sheen carries forward. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to grab a nice clean cloth and we're just going to buff off any residue left. And there it is, really, really nice. You can kind of see the sheen right there, really soft. If you could feel this finish, you would. Look at that, that's gorgeous. And that beautiful walnut shining through this color, hard to see on camera at certain angles, but I'm gonna buff the rest of the table and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. And there it is, all put back together, looking beautiful. So this is what the hand buffed finish looks like with the wool lube and the 4 aught steel wool. You can see that shimmer come across the table there, really nice. So take a guess, which one did we make? I won't tell you. <laughs> now, our leaf fits perfectly in the two halves of the table. The two older leaves have issues. One is warped, one is slightly askew, but um, we got them fitting pretty good for an old table. You can see that color popping through on a couple angles here. Yeah, so underneath we've got our new tracks here supporting the table and I did have to add a little bit of width because the old tracks were thicker to uh, make the center really work and hit the ground to support the table but yeah well I am going to tell you which one it is because I want you to see the profile hand carved profile this is the one Each of these profiles is a little bit different, but we matched it to the table so that it fit that way. I'll show you the other side. There you can see it matching up nicely with that table edge. Not perfectly with the leaf though. The leaf is like a shorter tip off here. Um, but if I take this off, then it won't match uh, this side here, so it is the best of both worlds. Anyways, thank you for joining me on this one, guys. Uh, I'm going to give my
poor clients their table back now so they can have it for Christmas. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, uh, please do like and subscribe to the, the channel. And if you'd like to do a little bit more, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. And thank you for those of you who do that on a regular basis. You are my heroes. And yeah, if you want to see any more transformations, we have a ton on the channel. Go check them out and uh, enjoy them. So have a great day and cheers.